Welcome back to Anderson's TV. Hope you enjoyed that little intro jam and you're in for a treat in this video because we've got lots of uh, good guitar players to uh, demonstrate these cool guitars, including me. Uh, not including, I mean, and me. Um, so, welcome Ross. Uh, here to tell us today all about the new Revstar guitars from Yamaha. Um, Revstar, uh, I remember, you know, six or seven years ago, a, quite a big launch uh, of the original Red yeah. Star guitar. Lots of kind of mix of, of uh, cultures and influences from, you know, motorbikes and a real sort of merging of Japanese and British culture with regards to the sort of the way the guitars were being presented with a kind of a, like a throwback to maybe an SG2000 or a slightly more obscure model, a Superflyter uh, Yamaha guitar with this sort of double cut, slightly offset vibe. Um, and 2022 is uh, the next generation of those Revstar guitars. So uh, Ross is here to tell us all about them. And the wonderful Chris Buck and Ross and Peter Honore will be demonstrating them at various points in this video. Uh, so enjoy. But Ross, welcome back uh, and tell us what have you bought with us today? A plethora of Rev Stars. Um, yeah, it, it's great. We kind of simplify the range, so it's three tiers now. So mm -hmm. we've got the Element, the Standard, and the Professional. So much more sort of simplified um, choice. Cool. Uh, on the Element, it's just this. This is the Element model. Still kind of like the original um, sort of RS320, kind of stripped back, a couple of humbuckers, three-way switch, and you've got the original dry switch on there as well the high pass filter okay it kind of shaves off a little bit of low end gives you kind of some brighter sounds um moving up to the professional you get a choice of humbuckers or p90s uh the p90s have the fabulous tailpiece oh yes definitely kind of gives you uh a, a different sound as well um and we've got a five-way selector on that with the new focus switch so we'll kind of go through some of these sounds awesome in a bit as well. i just feel this needs uh, the anderton coat of arms on that shield and Do it. it would be perfect um, okay, so that's element. Uh, sorry, elements standard, and lastly, then the professional. Yep. Uh, we've got a couple of other colours here as well. Uh, this moving up into a Japanese-made model as opposed Correct. to Indonesian on the other two. Yes. And what other groovy features do we get on this? So when you uh, so that all the bodies are chambered. Right. Um, so it gives it more resonance and balance and all that stuff. When you move up to the standard, you actually get carbon fibre in the neck. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you move up to the professional, there's carbon fiber in the body as well. And it's all about kind of um, gives it extra resonance, extra tone. Um, yeah. Speaking of resonance and tone and balance and all that kind of stuff, I notice, and it is not, uh, your eyes do not deceive you. These have grown very slightly from the previous version of Revstar. Um, by that, I kind of mean, you know, it's probably not a lot, but when you add it all the way around, it sort of looks 
yeah, obviously larger. Um, but what was the point of just making the bodies a bit bigger? So when we were designing the chambering, um, uh, we had the original body. What we figured out uh, was that we needed that extra size just for balance and, and again, that whole kind of resonance um, and sort of natural tone that we wanted to get out of the guitar. Uh, so the bodies had to grow slightly to, to yep. fit all that in. And one other thing, Forgive me if I'm wrong here, but I don't think the original Revstar has this kind of highly contoured heel joint. So is that a new thing? That's a new thing for this range, yeah. So we basically extended the neck into the body a little bit more. Um, so it actually shifts the position that you play um, and it just feels more comfortable and more got natural. It. I got it. And that, I think, yeah, that's the same heel joint all the way down from standard all the way up to pro. Um, so let's hear some and we might as well go in, you know, ascending order so we'll start with the elements first uh ross is plugged into pete's normal rig so clean valve amplifier with some pedals on the floor but sans pedals if you please monsieur yes. uh, just for the first bit so these are what yamaha own design absolutely pickups. okay so let's hear what we got so clean stuff bridge pickup just nice <laughs> middle neck I likey likey um and what does that thing I don't really understand what this pushy pulley thing does I thought it was going to be a coil tap but it's not right no it, it with a coil tap obviously you kind of you suddenly get buzz and hum um, and it cuts the power what this does is a similar thing so we call this a dry switch basically a high pass filter mm -hmm. so it just shaves off some low end gives you access to some brighter tones so kind of in a similar vein to core split or series parallel even uh, but you don't really lose any power and it doesn't make any noise okay um, so if we put a little bit of a um, little bit of love on this uh, you can kind of hear the difference <laughs> Without the drive, just absolutely, to, because I, I I think it's it's quite subtle, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So we're not. Whereas a, a coil split or a tap is trying to emulate a single coil, this is this is trying to just remove some unwanted bass end from a, a humbucker. Exactly. Uh, it sounds a similar kind of level. It didn't seem like it sort of dropped no. in gain or anything like that. So I kind of like it, it. For me, it's more kind of um, rather than going to a single coil, more like a kind of a P90. So it's okay. single coil esque, but fatter. Fair enough. So other features. I mean, I'm kind of looking. You've got a traditional uh, stop tail yep. there. Now that. Let me just quickly look. So there's. You don't get the fancy shield until you're up into the sort of standard series uh yeah so on the standard you get the choice of the humbuckers or the p90 on the p90 version you get the tailpiece cool uh and then the the stripes are the sort of the the yeah. um cafe racer kind of throwback exactly. you don't have to have that so i tell you what we'll do to make things easy for you now on screen will appear all the colors we only found out the pricing of these guitars about sort of two minutes ago um and i am somewhat blown away by where that one comes in because uh, that's going to be about 400 quid, maybe even change from 400 quid. So when you start sort of going, what is that up against? I mean, that's up against, I'm not even sure you can get an Epiphone Les Paul standard for that kind of dough anymore these days. So it's crazy good value. Um, and it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like a 400 quid guitar, you know. And now I'm not sure, and I think, you guys will have to try and find stores that stock these and, and decide for yourself. I don't know whether or not it's amazing that the 401 feels so good or whether it just makes it really hard to justify why you'd spend 1500 pounds because it doesn't feel like there's an 1100 pound price difference in the, the, the build between these two. I think it's just testament to how good, you know, mass produced guitars are these days. I mean, that, that is a that is a proper good guitar for the money yeah i mean we've all i mean we always try and make our guitars kind of punch above their weight um for, for the cost but yeah i mean everyone kind of said that about the original range as well it just felt so good mm. for the price um 
Tonally, you know, there is a difference between the models. So, so yeah, absolutely. From a price justification, you know, that's sort of down to your can, ears. Can we flip that one and just see the back of it? Just yep. to, on camera. So you can see you got the heel joint. You can see you got the, hopefully you can see the satin neck finish. Which yes. Which is a slightly different, you know, it hasn't got the shine, obviously, the body's no. got. But that feels great. Feels really nice yeah. to play. They're decent tuners and everything. Yeah, absolutely. They? Wow. Okay. Well, look, I'm going to, I'm going to let Ross carry on doing the demos. So let's move on over to standard. I guess visually the easiest thing to spot on standard versus elements is the binding. So you've got yes. a bound neck and a bound body, actually and some rather fetching block inlays as well. But uh, what are the other differences between these two models? So when you move up to this one, um, you get, uh, yeah, all the binding and the cosmetic stuff, but you get carbon fiber in the neck too, um, which again kind of helps with the balance and the resonance, gives it a certain something. Um, but for me, the really important stuff, you got a five-way switch okay. with some really useful and interesting sounds. And rather than the dry switch, um, we now have the focus switch. Focus. Focus. This is a um, this is a kind of a passive boost. Oh, wow. So it's a relatively subtle boost. It's not like a 20, 30 dB kind of thing. Uh, but it does boost. Um, and it also kind of shaves off some of the high end as well. So it's really useful for different things. The five-way switch gives you access to some really interesting sounds as well, rather than just your standard kind of five-way. Yeah. So. And I'll get the price out the way early doors on this one. This is, this is, I think most people who would look at standard might want to consider saving up the extra because it's not a million miles more. These are going to be about 600 quid. Um, and, you know, as Ross just explained, you know, it, I think it looks a little nicer and you've got a few more yeah. options, but let's hear it and then we'll we'll hear the, the P90 one as well. So Yeah. So it's on a bridge pickup. <laughs> Not sure what that chord was. That's, it's, it was it's near jazz. enough. Jazz. Jazz. Well, speaking of jazz, so I'll go to the neck pickup. So if I put the focus switch on that. Can't play jazz, but yeah, it, it kind really, of does that. That's, I've never seen that on a guitar before. I've never seen. I've never seen it. I wonder if that takes on a different characteristic with with uh, with overdrive because it, it it taking all the treble off mm. is quite a weird. Not, well, maybe weird is the wrong thing, but it's just it's just. Don't know. It's just like. 
So different. Yeah. So I mean, I, the the band I play and we do a lot of different things, and I'm always going for that kind of tone rolled off, sort mm -hmm. of jazzy sound for for certain things. <laughs> It's a struggle, sort of in the heat of battle, to get that spot right. Right. So that is the perfect spot. So what does it, it do to the, what's it do to the bridge pickup? That. So you can kind of hear that boost yeah. in slightly. It's cool. Okay, yeah. let's have a listen to some of the in-betweeny tones then. In-betweeny, um, so this is kind of what's happening is um, it's a specially designed circuit, so it's slightly delaying the opposite pickup. So it's not your traditional kind of position to and for that you would expect. So depending on what you're doing, it can sound a little bit quirky. <laughs> It's slightly delaying. You, you might have to elaborate there, Mr. Ross. You're physically saying that you're, you, you're, you are hearing the bridge pickup and then like a, a nano fraction later, the neck pickup, and it's doing something weird to the phasing then. Is it yeah, um, it, it, not like a digital delay or anything like yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Um, I, I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure how the circuit works or Magic. how it's done it. Magic is, is the correct. Japanese wizardry. Yes. Um, Wow. Um, I, do you know yeah. what? I, I, I'm sure, we'll, links below to go find out more about these guitars. I'm sure there'll be a scientific explanation as to why they did that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but for now, that's just what it sounds like. Yeah. Uh, but okay. it's, it's cool because it kind of, it's almost kind of, for me, it's almost kind of like a half cocked wah sort of thing. Um, again, bit of filth. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit more filthy, is that? It's a cool sound. Yeah, and you kind of pop out in the mix These are wonder well. somehow, how does someone come up? Do they wake up in the middle of the night, you know, sort of like, okay. <gasps> I know what. What if we just heard the neck pick up slightly after the bridge pick up? See what that sounds like. I wouldn't, it's, there we are. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so what's the middle position do? Uh, middle position. <laughs> Normal mid Does that, yeah. Um, and then position four. That's got a sort of cocked one. Is that just doing yeah. the same thing but the other way exactly. around? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. wow. So again with with <laughs> with a little bit of uh, a little bit of fill. <laughs> Probably a different one. So it's kind of in isolation. It it, it might not be the most pleasing sound, but like in a it. mix, yeah, it's like, oh, mm. cool. That's that's just, oh, there I am. That's going to be one of those. Uh, it's going to be like that Peter Green story, isn't it, of the mythical? So how did you come up with that? Well, I accidentally wired in some sort of you know time <laughs> machine into the guitar, and anyway, okay, yeah. neck pickup on its own. Neck pickup. Keep playing the same stuff. Okay, um, if I remember rightly, some, somewhere in my distant past, uh, someone says, is it stainless steel frets on these? Uh, on the sound of the professional stainless steel, Stainless steel yes. frets and rosewood boards? Yes. Oh, very much laggy, laggy. Okay. Uh, Swap. Yes. So here's the P90 version. Beautiful. Um, P90, I don't know, Pete and I were in our journey of guitars over the last six or seven years or whatever. I, I think we've started to decide the P90 is is, is a, an unsung hero. It might be the greatest pickup of all time. There's a lot of nodding in the room uh, from other guitar players. Just saying, if you haven't got one, check one out. Okay. Cool. Uh, bridge. So it's, got, it's just... Oh, Good sound. Lovely. Uh, middle. That's just a three-way switch, is it? No, nope. uh, we'll do the oh, five-way. Okay. So fine. 
The neck. And then again, your positions two and four. Doing the same as what this yeah. did. There, no, but, uh, I was thinking, cool. pick a key, any key, just yeah, not that one. All of the uh, keys. <laughs> Let's just do all of them. Uh, so, yeah. Are you playing much as well at the moment? Bam, yeah. we, we, you know, I don't know if you guys know this, but the uh, Yamaha and Line 6 is all one great big happy love in these days. So we had Paul Hindmarsh here yesterday doing uh, the... Um, Line six thing, great player. And Ross does the Yamaha thing. He's a great player too. So we, we let Paul plug his band. So plug yours. Um, the, the band I play in, we're kind of like a kind of a band for hire. So we play with a bunch of different people. Right. Um, depending on who we're playing with, we go... Weddings, birthdays, bar mitzvahs, bar... I can't even... I never Something say that like word that. right, but yeah. yes, whichever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's cool. It keeps it interesting. Come on, plug it. What's the name um, of the band? Uh, normally the band is Urban Intro. Urban Intro. It's Urban even got intro. a wedding band name. Yes. Awesome. Don't do, do too many weddings anymore, which is which is all right. But uh, yeah, we get about. <laughs> good man. Well, anyway, yes. If you want to see more of Ross playing, he's a very good guitar player too. Um, I am always. I mean, I I think it, you, people could be forgiven for perhaps assuming that this tail piece here is just a, a visual thing, and it does look super super cool. Yes. But it's definitely not just visual. I think a, any guitar with a, a sort of a floating style tail piece like that, you know, lots of old. Um, Epiphone and Gibson semi-acoustics and stuff you see that on it, it, it adds a real ringy overtone to the sound yeah. that you don't get when the guitars are sort of more firmly attached to the body absolutely I wonder if acoustically could you just strum yeah. that and then maybe and then do the same with that one <laughs> see no difference whatsoever I told you <laughs> Um, no, trust me, trust me. It does a it does a thing. It does a thing yeah. for sure. Um, it's a little bit warmer sounding, I think, without yeah. guitar piece. Anyway, look, so From that's here. standard series. We've still got the satin neck. Yes. Uh, got the same tuners by the looks of things. Yes. I like the Yamaha motif at the top. I like that it's a badge rather yeah. than just a transfer. Classy. Um, so these are the same price regardless of whether you go P90 or humbuckers. Colours are on screen now. Let's go pro. Let's go pro, yes. baby.
Now, Pro is a full taste of Japan. Uh, there's always something, you know, there are not many guitar making countries in the world that are up there with Japan. I think, you know, it's, you could argue the US, some would argue Japan, it's where generally speaking all the really, really top end stuff comes out of. Um, but on the flip side though, it does look remarkably similar to the standard one. So yeah. tell us what the differences are, because it's quite a leap up, isn't it? These are, I think I'd, these are about 1,500 pounds. Okay. Still quite good value actually for a <clears throat> Japanese guitar, but obviously, you know, double the price of the, of the standard. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the Japanese craftsmanship is just crazy quality. Yeah. Um, so yeah, whilst there's not a significant feel difference, it's they, they these definitely feel uh, a little bit different, but the carbon fiber in the body, it really does add that extra little I, bit of something. I The tone wood comment section has just lit up. <laughs> Um, so, okay, I am familiar with guitar brands putting carbon fiber rods either side of the truss rod yes. to stop movement. Yep. Get that. That's pretty accepted. This though, uh, I don't know if I'll have a picture on screen now. I've, I've seen a picture. Underneath the bridge and the tailpiece are two carbon fiber rods. Yes. Which Yamaha claim uh, that through all of their sort of background in acoustic guitars and just generally using, you know, trying different things to change the resonance and stuff of guitars, reckon that these two carbon fiber rods that sit under there do change, uh, improve the clarity of the guitar and change the resonance of the guitar. What I'm, don't shoot the messenger is all I'm saying. But hey, look, if Yamaha say it, I mean, they're pretty well, well respected, right? And they make they know what they're doing when they make guitars. So uh, absolutely, I mean, you, you know, we've got the technology to kind of measure this stuff and, and actually see a visual difference. Um, but you know, a visual difference on a screen and a and a chart and everything is yeah. one thing. Yeah. Audibly and and the, the actual proof is in Here's the Here's the challenge, Yamaha. You need to bring down two versions of this guitar, one with, one without. You've got to shoot mount blindfold. Although allegedly that is apparently what happened during the R&D phase. One yeah. with, one without, and, and everyone liked the one with. So, hey, <laughs> let's let's hear it. I mean, you, you've got the P91, yes. so you might as well uh, launch in with that one first. Uh, I can see we've got anodized guards, which is a, usually a... Oh, and I did mean to mention, so although these don't come in left-handed, I got it wrong earlier in the video, uh, the standard and the elements come in left-handed. So again, you can go and delete your comment, left-handed people from five minutes ago, because uh, you can have one. So there we are. It would have helped if I'd have mentioned it. Well, it's fine. <laughs> Let's hear that one. Yes. You haven't got any pedals on, have you? Nope. Now that is quite a lot hotter than that one, or at least to my ears, sounded hotter than that one. Yeah, I mean, it could be a little bit higher are pickup. They, are they different pickups? Or nope, the same, same pickups. So same pickup. Yes. So, so it's, that's, that is literally the carbon fiber effect, maybe. I don't know, I mean, it, it it's one sounded louder. hotter to me, maybe, yeah, sounded hotter to me. Okay, keep going, one sorry. Cool, uh, position, uh, position two. <laughs> Uh, right. middle. Remarkably nice to play these, aren't they? Yeah, I love Put it. Put some dirt on it then and, and give us a bit of that Filth, and then we'll um, try this one. Uh, well, yeah, you were asking earlier about the focus switch and how it responds to filthiness. I was. So, so it's the same focus switch in same that? Same focus, yes. are, are we really saying that the difference between standard and pro is basically country of origin then? Uh, country and of origin, the extra carbon fiber. Um, the professionals also have our um, special uh, initial response acceleration treatment. Age. Wow, it's, I tell you, your marketing department is working overtime at the moment, aren't yeah. they? What did you call that? 
Initial response acceleration. Um, wow. We use it on a couple of <laughs> a couple of models as well, like the the, the Attitude, Billy Sheen bass and stuff. It's it's basically when we f finish the guitar. Um, we send vibrations through, so it's giving the impression that the guitar's been ah. played for a while. Yes, I mean that's a, again that's another reasonably it's accepted thing. thing, isn't it? Yeah. Just don't haven't heard it called that before. Yes. Um, I should say, by the way, that again we haven't shown you the colours yet. Colours on screen for professional series, and these come with a hard case. Uh, uh, yes. Whereas uh, standard is just a gig bag. Um, sounds good. Sorry, you with avec dirt. Go on, give it filthy, some. filthy. <laughs> Ah, oh, focus, yes. Focus. So it's it's What's almost the... kind of giving it like an overwound pickup kind of vibe. Yeah, it's, I think it'd be interesting to see what uses people find with that. I mean, I. It, that riff sounded like, what's the Michael Jackson song where the beginning of the song is the guitar being, like the hi-fi being played in a different room and the dad oh. just bangs on the ceiling and says, you know, turn it down or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like the intro to that, which I'm not, I'm not necessarily thinking that's a good thing, but um, yeah, it's a, okay, maybe it's a jazzers thing. What would, comment below, what would you use the focus switch for on a Yamaha Revstar? Well, on the neck pickup, it does, like I say, it's that kind of almost Santana-esque thing. Um, so all of the... Yeah, American woman tone, isn't it? That yeah. kind of, I get that. I totally get that. Um, cool. So that's that one, last one. Bridge. No, I liked it. Right, what are we on now? Position uh, three? So, uh, yeah, middle. Chris's licks, he'll have nothing left to play when he comes on. Okay. And then obviously the big yes. rock stuff. sustained yeah. and you've got do you know what, Yamaha I've got form on this front because if you go right back to the 70s and the 80s with the original SG2000 it was all about the, they reckon the reason that guitar sustained so much was it was about the big brass massive uh, brass block plate that sat underneath the bridge so this idea of putting you know carbon fiber tone rods and stuff underneath the uh, the bridge is it's not you know it's not totally uncharted territory for Yamaha and, and it clearly I mean it sustains like a like a mother um, and just for those of you interested, the pedals that uh, Ross is using is uh, it's Pete's uh, Thorpey Dane, and for extra extra, it's with a um, JHS Charlie Brown as well. Morning Glory. Morning Glory. That's what I meant to say. Um, so that's what it is. It's a Morning Glory and a Dane. Uh, sounds great. Look, yes. thanks for coming in, man. Cheers um, for having me. So these are out now. Uh, video will be live as soon as these get released. Um, if you want to know when they're going to be in the shops, again, follow the links below and it will tell you on the Anderton's website. Um, I like them a lot. I kind of, I mean, what's not to like about the high-vis jacket yellow on the Revstar elements? That's a wicked looking guitar, isn't it? Yeah, man. There isn't really a, I do like this blue one, I think. I like yeah. this blue one a lot. Did you say that this blue comes in some of the other models, or is this a... Yeah, yeah. All of them. You can get this in all three. Oh, well, that's going to be the popular one then, isn't it? It's a great colour. 
Well, there you are. Thank you so much for coming in. Cheers, man. Thank you to the other wonderful people that have played guitar during this demonstration video. Um, please like and subscribe. Join us again soon on Anderton's TV. See ya.